Narcissus Seduction, Episode 17. Ashley Havenia strode into the bedroom and, without even speaking, began to kiss Wynne. Her hands moved to undo his tie, and he caressed her through her blouse. She stepped back and began to unbutton her blouse, indicating with her eyes for him to do the same with his shirt. He obeyed, and he watched as her blouse opened, revealing the slopes of her inviting breasts cupped in a white bra. She unzipped her skirt as he undid his trousers, and they both stood in their underwear. Wynne pulled a sock from his foot as she jumped backwards onto the bed and lifted her pelvis, pulling her panties down. He could feel himself swelling at the sight of her thighs as she invitingly opened them slightly, giving him a view of what lay beneath. He slid off the other sock and then lowered his underwear, stepping out of his shorts and towering over her. Take your bra off, he instructed. She reached behind and deftly opened it, wriggling out of it and exposing her firm breasts, her light pink nipples already hardened. His body responded at the sight of her nakedness, and she bit her lip. No foreplay, just fuck me, she said. Wynne reached for his cock and stroked it, coaxing it into full hardness as he then advanced towards Ashley. She parted her legs and laid back, her eyes fixed on his. He looked down and took hold of himself as he guided his erection towards her. He rubbed it up and down outside of her pussy, and she murmured in pleasure, Fuck me, she said again. He pushed into her, and she gasped. He adjusted his position and pushed deeper still, savouring the sensation of her engulfing him. He felt her tilt her pelvis, and then he began to move inside her, short thrusts at a steady tempo. It had been several months since he had last had sex, and he hoped he would last at least a reasonable period of time. She opened her mouth in delight and pushed herself against him. Oh God, oh God, she said. He moved faster inside her, increasing his stroke as she grabbed hold of his shoulders. Yes, oh yes, she cried out. She then opened her mouth wide, her eyes round and staring, almost as in surprise, and with her right hand beat her fist down on his chest. Her eyes rolled and she hit him again. Surely she had not just had an orgasm, not that quick. She squeezed her eyes closed and opened her mouth again. Her eyes opened suddenly and another look of shock and surprise gripped her face. It just won't stop, she gasped. I'm going to come, warned Wynne. Not in me, she said. He obliged and pulled out, rolling onto his back. She jumped up and took hold of his glistening length and began to pump him. Come on, shoot for me, she urged him, staring at his cock as she worked on it. It did not take long, and Wynne came, spurting onto his stomach. He noticed as he did so, Ashley opened her mouth in delight, a gasp emitting and her eyes wide. It was almost as if she had never seen this happen before. She seemed to get as much pleasure from his orgasm as he did. As soon as he had finished, she hopped off the bed and collected some toilet roll for him. She stood watching him as he cleaned himself up. You know what you are doing of that, I am most sure, she said, and then turned to examine her body in the mirror behind her. Well, I've had a few years' practice, he answered. I wonder how long it will be before you're ready again she asked, as she pulled her hair up and twisted on her toes. No idea. You will have to wait and see. Roughly twenty minutes later, he was inside her again, as she rode him. He was pinned down as she roughly grabbed his shoulders, her nails digging into him. He thrust upwards as she writhed atop him. Oh yes, just there, she declared as they moved together. Jesus, your dick is just the right shape for me, she added. Wynne stifled a laugh at her comment. Nobody had said that to him before. She cried out and squeezed his shoulders hard, a stab of pain arising until she relaxed her grip and moved again on him, bucking as she continued to move up and down. Tell me when you're about to come, she instructed. 
He nodded and lay back, enjoying the sensation as she slid up and down on him. After a couple of minutes, he issued his warning and she climbed off him, and this time lowered her lips to him, letting him finish in her mouth. She looked to him, eyes glowing and wiped at her mouth. I've never let Peter do that to me, she remarked. You're kidding. No, he always begs to come in my mouth, but I won't let him. It irritates the fuck out of him. Then why me? said Wynne, perplexed. Because you are so different. You think about me when you take me to bed, not just about yourself. That is what he does. All he cares about is his orgasm and not mine. I see. So that was my way of getting back at him. Sure, but he doesn't know what you've just done, does he? Well, no, but all the same, I do. And that is all that matters, isn't it? If it suits you, I suppose so. It does. That was good, said Wynne breathlessly, still basking in the final paroxysms of his orgasm. You're telling me, said Ashley. Wynne reached out a hand and took hold of hers. She raised it and kissed it. Well, it has taken twenty-four years before someone has finally been able to do that to me, she remarked, as she got off the bed and made her way to the ensuite bathroom. Do what? asked Wynne from the bed. You know, make me orgasm. She disappeared from view as she pushed the door behind her. Wynne snorted. He didn't believe that comment at all not from someone who had been in a relationship for twenty years, and by all accounts had had several lovers. He waited until she emerged, and she reached inside her bag and extracted a fresh pair of panties, which she slipped on and began fastening her bra again. Seriously? said Wynne. I am serious. You're the first who's been able to do it. I'm not sure what to say, admitted Wynne, taken aback by her admission. He never has. I'm scared of going to bed with him. Why? He only thinks of himself. He doesn't turn me on. He never has. Then why did you get with him and stay with him? asked Wynne, as he swung his legs off the side of the bed. I felt I owed him. How on earth do you owe him? asked Wynne. Ashley gave a sigh and looked down at the floor. A moment of silence passed as she seemed to be considering whether she should elaborate on her comment. I may as well tell you. You need to know, she began. Wynne pulled on his underwear, but stopped dressing any further, as he sat down again, waiting for her words. I was, an I was anorexic at university. I only uh, used to eat a cupcake every Wednesday. What? You're kidding me. No. My weight dropped, and I kept fainting. I just started seeing Peter, and in fairness, he nursed me through it. Well, that was good of him, said Wynne warmly. She nodded. I'm not sure what caused it. Probably something to do with my mum. Anyway, because of that, I felt I should stay with him, even though I didn't fancy him. Well, he did the right thing, and I'm sure anybody else who cared for you would have done the same. But that isn't a sound reason to have a relationship with somebody, commented Wynne. Hey, I've done all right. I have a good car, lovely house, and plenty of foreign holidays. Money isn't a concern these days. I thought you hated your house. You said it was too square, too much like a block, reminded Wynne. She paused as if she was trying to remember something. Did I? Hmm. Well, I suppose I have to have some benefit from my marriage. He isn't it. But that's not a reason to stay with someone just because he has money. I have money too. He just earns more. I would have earned more if I hadn't had Amelia. But you did. Yes. But it isn't fair that my career was halted because I had a child. If I remember from what you said a little while ago, you hardly had any maternity leave. Yes, I didn't. But even so, having her slowed my progress down. Well, sadly it happens. I know it's not right, but it happens. You see, he demands sex and forces himself on me. Forces himself? Well, he pesters, and pesters me until it is easier just to give in. Oh, I see. Yes, so when he... Who know? He's inside me. I'm not wet. Well, I've not noticed you having any problem in that regard. Not with you. No, God, no. You may be wet just from your text messages, confirmed Ashley. Is it just with him? What about the other men that you've had? Well, as I said with Aaron, that was more tantric, peaceful, so I was relaxed then. With Peter, I would be dry and it would be painful. I would usually end up with an infection afterwards because of it. An infection? 
yeah, it's a yeast infection. So if you start feeling an itch, I apologise. That's hardly reassuring, said Wing. It's nothing bad, just uncomfortable. I have some cream that will sort it out, she said matter-of-factly. I would avoid having sex with him. Well, to be honest, we don't match these days. Sorry, I'm sure you don't want to hear this, but I had to tell you. You know, he once took me to the GP to try and ascertain why my sex drive is so low. He took you to your GP? To your doctor? Yes. His ego is so big, of course, that he couldn't see that it was only with him that I had no interest in sex. But I want you repeatedly. Well, I have to agree. You seem pretty much up for it with me, said Wynne. I am. I just don't fancy him. I can't. He just doesn't do it for me. I felt ridiculous seeing the doctor. Peter wanted me to have blood tests and all sorts. He was convinced it was something wrong with me when it was just because I didn't want to go to bed with him. Extraordinary. Still, I don't have that problem with you, Ian. She smiled and leant in to kiss him. She turned to the clock. Have we time to go again? She asked. I need a little time to recover, please, and then I need to get to work. Fair enough. Twice already is good for me, she said. She picked up her discarded panties. I got rather excited on the way over to see you, so these could do with washing, if you don't mind. Non-bio, or I'll itch. Sure, just pop them in the linen basket over there, said Wynne, waving to the bin in the corner of the bathroom. I'll keep them here as a spare pair, she said, over her shoulder. She then took a few other items from her bag. I managed to smuggle out some extra makeup this morning to leave here, just in case I need to touch it up, you know, after we've made love. May I leave it here? Of course, just put it on the shelf in the bathroom, answered Wynne. He watched as she laid out the items on the shelf, placing a box alongside them too. They had moved closer, and now she was adding more from her life into his home. He was pleased. The day had started rather well. Ashley returned to the bedroom, and straightened her hold-up stockings, which she had kept on as they'd made love. She smoothed the material along her legs. I've shapely legs, she said. They are just marked. Yes, I noticed a scar and a couple of bruises. I injured my leg when I was 16, and I had to have an operation. That's what the scar is from. She made no comment about the bruises. These stockings cover the marks well, though. I'm good at covering things up. She reached for her skirt, and Wynne picked up a sock and began pulling it over his foot. I want us to make love every day here. This is my safe place, announced Ashley suddenly. She stopped dressing and stared at Wynne. Not an issue with me, he answered. She smiled. It was a smile of gratitude. He returned the smile, trying to hide the sorrow he felt for this wonderful lady trapped 